Good morning everyone, my name is Dimpol Palera, and for this video, we will discuss the structures for facilitating learner-centered teaching. We have three structures for facilitating learner-centered teaching. The first one is the formal or traditional. Second, we have alternative learning system or ALS. Under this are the non-formal education or NFE. Second is informal education or NFED. And the third one is the mobile teacher. And lastly, the alternative delivery modes or ADM. Under this are the modified in-school approach or MIMOSA. Enhanced Instructional Management by Parents, Community, and Teachers, or E-Impact. And lastly, the Open High School Program, or OHSP. Now, let's discuss the first structures for facilitating learner-centered teaching, the formal or traditional. So, it's stated here that the formal education system is classroom-based and managed by trained traditional school teachers. So the term traditional implies that the education system follows conventional practices that have been in place for a significant period. This includes relying on textbooks, structured curricula, teacher-centered instruction, and assessment method like exams and quizzes. The formal education systems management and facilitations of learning are entrusted to train teachers. These teachers have typically received professional training, such as completing teaching programs, earning teaching credentials, or obtaining relevant degrees. Now, we have formal education structured by curriculum, tests, grades, and homeworks. So, Curriculum refers to the planned course of study that outlines the topics, subjects, and learning objectives that students are expected to cover within a specific grade level or educational program. And also, the tests are the assessment conducted to measure students' understanding of the material taught in the curriculum. They are used to evaluate students' knowledge, comprehension, and application of concepts. So, tests can take various forms such as written exams, oral exams, practical assessment, or project-based evaluation. And grades are the numerical or letter-based evaluations assigned to students for performance in tests, assignments, and other assessment. And lastly, the homework. Homework refers to tasks and assignments given to students to be completed outside of regular class arm. It reinforces the concepts learned in the classroom and encourage independent learning and allows students to practice and apply their knowledge. Now, here are the examples of formal education. First, we have learning in a classroom. This refers to the traditional approach where students attend a physical classroom to receive instruction from teachers. Classroom learning involves direct interaction between teachers and students. Next is the school grading certification, college and university degrees. And lastly, we have planned education of different subjects having a proper syllabus acquired by attending the institution. So, formal education involves a planned and structured curriculum that covers various subjects or disciplines. Institutions develop specific syllabi for each subject, outlining the topics, learning objectives, and content to be covered. Now, let's proceed to the pros and cons of formal or traditional education. First, we have here the pros or the advantage of traditional education. So, first is punctuality. Students are required to arrive at school or class at specific times, which helps instill discipline and time management skill. By, of course, following a set timetable, Students learn to prioritize their tasks and develop a sense of responsibility. 
The next one is social interaction. Students will attend classes with their peers, engage in discussions, collaborate on group projects, and participate in extracurricular activities together. While this a social interaction will foster the development of interpersonal skills, teamwork, and the ability to build relationships. Next is extracurricular activities. So the formal or traditional education often provides a range of extracurricular activities such as sports, clubs, arts, and community services. These activities allow students to explore their interests beyond the academic curriculum, develop their talents, and build well-rounded personalities. And lastly, the face-to-face -face interaction. So, the formal or traditional education facilitates direct face-to-face -face interaction between students and teachers. So, this enables students to ask questions, seek clarification, and engage in discussion with their instructors or teachers. It also promotes a deeper understanding of the subject matter. Next is the cons or the disadvantage of traditional education. So first, we have generalized learning. So in a formal or traditional education system, the curriculum is often designed to cater to the needs of a large group of students. This can result in a generalized approach to teaching and learning, where individual learning styles interests and abilities may not be adequately addressed. Next, we have passive listeners. In a traditional classroom setting, students are typically expected to listen attentively to the teacher's lectures. This can foster a passive learning environment where students may not actively engage with the material or participate in critical thinking. So this passive learning approach may limit students' ability to develop independent thinking skills and creativity next is no flexible time so traditional education often follows a schedule requires students to attend classes at specific times throughout the week so this lack of flexibility in scheduling can be challenging for students who have other commitments or prefer to learn at their own pace it may also limit opportunities for students to explore their uh, personal interests or engage in extracurricular activities outside of the set timetable. Next is expensive. So traditional education can be costly, particularly when considering expenses such as tuition fees, textbooks, transportation, and other associated costs like buying materials for group projects and lastly the teacher-centered learning so teacher plays a central role in delivering information and directing the learning process while teachers are valuable resources this approach may limit students autonomy and engagement it can also restrict opportunities for students to take ownership of their learning explore their own interest, and develop critical thinking and problem-solving skills. So that's the end of my discussion about formal or traditional. So my other member, Ms. Pombo and Ms. Makasling, will further explain about alternative learning system or ALS and alternative delivery modes or ADM. Thank you for listening.